I'm Rachel, and this is Planting Curiosity, and today I'm in a bog looking for carnivorous plants. This is round leaf sundew. It's so tiny, but absolutely fierce. Each of those little tentacles is tipped with a drop of sugary mucilage. It looks like dew, but it's actually a sticky trap. Insects are drawn to it because of its sweet smell and sparkly appearance. When an insect lands, it gets stuck. The more it moves, the more it triggers the sundew's predatory response. The tentacles start to bend in surrounding the insect, so it becomes even more stuck. Then it gets even cooler, or worse if you're the insect. The plant releases digestive enzymes, which break down the bug's soft tissues, things like proteins, fats, and even DNA. It's like slurping up a smoothie made of bugs. Whoa! Okay, there's an ant very, very close to the sundew leaves. It's flirting with danger. <laughs> it's walking on the leaves. Okay, it's in the plant. Oh, it escaped! It made it through the sticky tentacles. It didn't get stuck. That's pretty impressive. But when looking here, I can see that there are some that have unfortunately been trapped in the sticky tentacles. Some of them are still wiggling around and trying to get out, but other ones are very much decayed and you can just see remnants of their body. That's nuts. There are hundreds of sundews all around me here. So what makes this place perfect for carnivorous plants? Bogs and wetlands like this are low in nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen, which most plants need to survive. So instead of getting nutrients from the soil, they've evolved to eat insects, which is very different from other species. That's what makes carnivorous plants so fascinating. They're not just surviving out here, they're thriving where other plants can't. Sundews aren't the only carnivorous plants in BC. To learn more, let's meet Justin Dunning, an expert who specializes in carnivorous plants and other species that live in bogs. This is such a special place. I feel like people don't see carnivorous plants very often. Does that mean that their habitats are rare? Their habitat is becoming more and more rare, but they can only grow in these wetland ecosystems. What are the threats to carnivorous plants? Well, climate change is the number one biggest threat to carnivorous plants. Here in these bog ecosystems, they need the rains and they need this Pacific Northwest climate. And without it, they're not going to stay hydrated. Even over the years that I've been seeing these bogs, we can year after year, some of them become more and more dry and we start losing parts of the bog and you don't get to see the plants that we used to see in them. This is a ecosystem that's super undervalued and often overlooked. It might not be as glamorous as the giant trees in the forest or these open oceans, but these wetland ecosystems are just as important as those. The good news in British Columbia is we have a lot of this habitat still and we can preserve them now before they're gone. So I've seen lots of sundews here, but are there other carnivorous plants that I can find? Yeah, there are. Even in this bog, there's other species of carnivorous plants, but some of them can be a little harder to find. So maybe we could go see them in the greenhouse. Yeah, that'd be great. This one here is uh, the purple pitcher plant. And wow. it's native all the way across Canada from British Columbia to Newfoundland. And it's actually Newfoundland's provincial flower. Is there any way that the insects can get out once they've fallen in? No, so these ones have a couple ways to stop them. See, it uses these little downward pointing hairs to help trap its prey. So if a, an insect is crawling across here and, and gets caught on those hairs, it'll direct it straight into the mouth of the pitcher. But there's also a waxy layer on the inside that uh, is very difficult for insects to climb up and they eventually get exhausted and it will be digested by the, all the juices inside. What a way to go. How do they get the liquid inside? So they actually excrete their own digestive enzymes and their own, uh, and they have digestive glands as well, and they will break down the insect and then absorb the nutrients from their bodies. And what does it smell like? Does it smell bad? Oh, well, it's a lot of rotting insects, so you can see. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so stinky. I guess it is like an enzymatic digested bug soup. Yep. So it yeah. sounds like it would smell very good. Very, very soupy. So we've seen sundews, we've seen this pitcher plant. What other species do we have in Canada and BC?
So this is a bladderwort. It's an aquatic carnivorous plant. And if you're swimming in any body of water around Vancouver Island, there's a good chance that you might have this carnivorous plant swimming with you. Should we be worried as humans? Uh, yeah, not really. Unless you're a little aquatic insect or a little microscopic organism, I think you're safe. Okay, good. So what type of insects do they go after then if they live in the water? There will be little tiny nymphs of insects, maybe Daphnia, anything really tiny. They call them bladder warts because they have these little tiny bladders that they've developed from their leaves and they create a suction and it, when it's triggered, they suck them into the bladder and digest them. I noticed that it's floating and there's no anchor that's attaching it down to the bottom. Yeah, so unlike the pitcher plants that we saw earlier that would be growing in the bogs, these are called suspended aquatic carnivorous plants and they're just going to grow suspended in the body of water. Is it fair to say that they're on the hunt when they're floating through the water? Sure. <laughs> That's pretty cool. When you think of a plant, you usually don't think of it physically moving to try to find its food. So we've seen sundews, pitcher plants, bladderworts, and I recognize one outside as well, butterworts. Those are native to BC, right? Absolutely. We have butterworts just over here. Okay, so this is butterwort. I've seen these hiking up in the alpine before. And all these little black dots here, are those bugs? Those are all insects trapped to the tentacles of this butterwort. Oh my gosh, so they just catch them on their leaves. Yeah, just like the sundews we saw, except for the tentacles are very short and very close to the leaf. I can't believe that all those little dots are, are insects. A lot of the plants we've been looking at today, they grow in bogs and nutrient poor environments that are really wet but this grows in the Alpine. So how is it adapted to grow in places that are rocky like this? The horned butterwort can actually grow in bogs, but one of its favorite spots to grow is on these shaded, moist walls on the sides of Alpine areas that might be fed from snow melt or maybe condensation. And uh, they are also nutrient poor areas. We've seen all the different groups of carnivorous plants in British Columbia. I want to go see them in the wild. And you should, and everyone should go out to these ecosystems and enjoy these plants. And that's why we need to protect these ecosystems and protect these wetlands and make sure that they're around for future generations to enjoy. So next time you're near a bog or wetland, keep an eye out. You might just spot one of these tiny predators on the hunt. And that's a pretty cool reminder that nature always has surprises up its sleeve.